Baltimore Ravens have been busy in the early stages of training camp. We talk about who's looked good so far, who we might want to see a little more from, and a lot more coming up next on this episode of Locked on Ravens. You are Locked on Ravens, your daily Baltimore Ravens podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome into another edition of Locked On Ravens, your daily Baltimore Ravens podcast. I'm your host, Kevin Ostrecker of Ravens Wire. We're here with you on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you so much, as always, for being here today and making us a part of your day, your first listen as well each and every day. We're free and available on all podcasting platforms. So we got you in audio form where you can like and follow along, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, the whole nine yards. Also on YouTube, you can like and subscribe over in video form as well. Today's episode of Locked on Ravens is brought to you by LinkedIn. Leading jobs to find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free on LinkedIn.com slash Locked on NFL. That's LinkedIn.com slash Locked on NFL to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. We have a very special episode, Purple Friday, here for two different reasons. The first one being we have a first-time guest on the show, Nikki Ometa of Russell Street Report, covers the Ravens out in Owings Mills and does a great job of doing so. So, Nikki, I want to first of all welcome you to the show and appreciate you taking the time, and especially a very busy time with the Ravens. We know they're trying to get back into form after that disappointing 2023 exit. Yeah, Kevin, I appreciate you inviting me. The uh, The team is looking, starting to round into shape. It's still the early goings of training camp. Uh, no pads, so minimal contact. It's hard to take too many takeaways and any and any little things that you see in terms of who's playing where on the offensive line, for example. You, a lot of pinches of salt to go with that based on what the Ravens have done in past seasons. Right, and so the pads do come on today on Friday, so that is a another step, a check mark off the checklist for the Ravens when we get geared up for the 2024 season. But, Nikhil, I wanted to start with you just – by asking you about some of the trends that we have heard about so far throughout training camp and stuff that you have seen. I think, first of all, seems like the defense has picked up right where they left off from 2023, dominating all the way around. And again, that can be a product of pads versus no pads. But to you, how explosive does this defense look? Because the big storyline has been, what is the shift from Mike McDonald to Zach we're going to look like? Yeah, the defense looks phenomenal. Uh, I think they had six interceptions in practice on Wednesday. They're consistently making plays on the ball. It's hard to have too many takeaways from the run game, but it's very clear the defensive line has been very much controlling the point of attack uh, against the offensive line in the early going. And I think that's one, a sign of how much continuity there is on this defense compared to the offense, and two, how much talent there is on this defense. I think more most of the team's bigger contracts are on the defensive side of the ball, and, and so you kind of expect at this point every year the Ravens training camp, the defense comes in and kind of owns the offense to start a little bit, especially with Lamar Jackson's sideline for most of the week. Yeah, and, and that's a big part, too, because obviously we all love the phrase iron sharpens iron. I know Mark Andrews talked a bit about that during his media availability. But with this defense to kill, I think it is so true because of just how impressive they look. But with the secondary in particular, a name that keeps popping up is Arthur Millette. And I don't think a lot of people really knew what the Ravens were getting last year coming over from Pittsburgh. But he chose this path of like, all right, going from division rival to another division rival. It worked out well for him, though. They used him in a bunch of different roles, obviously, as the slot guy, but him coming off of the edge was really effective for them last year as a blitzer. What was it? Three interceptions and three training camp practices, I think the stat was leading up to this. I mean, how has he looked to you? Is there a little bounce in this step right now? Yeah, I mean, he has just been one of the most active players. I think just the position that he plays in slot, there there is always a lot of action thrown balls thrown in that area runs coming in that area and he doesn't shy away from any challenge i was really really impressed with the play i think it was on tuesday where there was a fade route from nelson aguilar down the sideline against mallet and mallet's not an especially big corner uh, aguilar has a couple inches and, and quite a few pounds on him mallet skied and made one of those like madden user lurk interceptions <laughs> where he is fully airborne he's almost horizontal and comes down with it He's been doing that all camp. He's he's made a play on the ball in pr almost every practice that I've watched, and, and that's hard to do. So the, the 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 amazing thing about having a guy like Arthur Mollette is that you can just stick him in the slot and be very comfortable with it, and that enables you to move around your Kyle Hamilton, your Marlon Humphrey, to whatever matchups that you want to play with them. He is so reliable in that slot. In that slot, uh, that. You know, it, they really struck gold with him. Like you mentioned, he left the Steelers, very cheap deal with the Ravens last year, re-signed with them for two years, which I thought was a really smart move by Eric DaCosta because he is going to be even, he is going to be a steal next year as well if they keep him on that contract. 
Yeah, and we know that the Ravens and the Kiel love their like outside corner rotations. We saw it with guys like Marcus Peters, Jimmy Smith, Marlon Humphrey, even when Brandon Carr was with the team, they like to use those guys in tandem. But the key to that is having a great slot corner in there too. Tavon Young, obviously, for all those years when he was healthy, was great. Millette can be that Tavon Young type player. But you mentioned moving Kyle Hamilton around, and I think – that's why me personally, I was so excited for the Eddie Jackson sign was because not only was it a steal, he's a great vet, but that does allow the Ravens to free up Hamilton a little more as that Swiss army knife and move him all around the field. Like we have seen in the past. I know Jackson got an interception. What was it on day two? I believe is. is yes. Was. Yep. Day two. How, how has he looked so far? And it seems like he's really excited to just be with the team. And again, he knows a lot of people already. So it's been pretty easy for him to transfer him in. It was really cool to hear him talk about, like you said, he knows a lot of people already, his connection with Marlon Humphrey back in Alabama, him growing up and, you know, growing up 15 minutes away from Lamar Jackson, calling Zay Flowers his little cousin. It, he very integrated in the locker room from day one and very integrated in the defense from day one. He fits that center field free safety archetype that the Ravens needed after Geno Stone left him for agency. And him and Mallette really represent the role players that Mike McDonald talked about in training camp last year that enable your Kyle Hamilton to go out and be versatile because you need to, you need someone to hold down the fort. If he's moving from spot to spot, you need someone to hold down wherever spot he vacates. And so if he's not playing deep safety, someone needs to. And I think the Ravens have done those two players combined are making, I think no more than, $4 million combined this year or something yeah. like that. That is really, really good general managering by Eric Acosta. It's not a verb, but we're going to go. With it. <laughs> you know what? We're going with it. General managering. You heard it here first on Locked on Ravens. We're making up new words. So I, I love it. But you're exactly right, Nikhil, because we know with Lamar Jackson's contract and these other big money deals they have, the way that this Ravens team has to build out their roster without the star power that they have, which we know they have plenty of that, but it's hitting on your veteran signings for a minimum or close to it and hitting on your draft picks on all three days. We did, we know they did that last off season with their vet guys, but being able to bring back some of those guys, plus adding a sprinkle of new guys here and there is really what this team needs to do. Now, Nate Wiggins is his feet as advertised. Yeah, I, I have not seen someone move in person as fast as Nate Wiggins, other than Xavier Worthy at the Combine, I should say. <laughs> but Wiggins, what's really impressive is his speed translates right into his game. There are some guys, you think about a lot of these track stars from the Combine in previous years. John Ross is the biggest one that stands out as setting the record for the Combine, but not being able to do much in the NFL because his speed did not translate as play speed on the field. Wiggins, you see it. You see his ability to mirror really quickly and close ground really quickly. One of the stories, in my opinion, of OTAs and minicamp was the lack of targets that Wiggins was getting during 7-on-7s, seven during 11-on-11s, because he was covering so well. Now, in training camp, we've seen him get targeted a few times. The results, he had an interception the other day. He had a pass breakup the day before. And that's just – and the interception was impressive. In the rain – he, he was in the receiver's hip, close to the ball, and actually ripped it away. I think it was from Sean Ryan. I'm not 100% sure. And that that is just the kind of play that he makes with ease. The veterans talking about him have been so impressed because, remember, this guy is 20 years old. That's what Chris Hewitt yeah. told us the other day. And, and that, to me, is the core of why the Ravens draft him where they did. They see him as a long-term foundational cornerback, and he's clearly got all of the high-end skills that you need. And it's just going to be a matter of him getting the reps and getting comfortable in the defense. And people were so excited when he was drafted because this NFL game, the kills moving to a speed game, and especially like what to see the chiefs with that track team. He mentioned Xavier worthy out there in Kansas city. You need guys like Nate Wiggins to be able to compact some of that. So to me, that's really impressive. But the big story going into training camp, or at least one of them, Marlon Humphrey obviously missed some time during the OTA minicamp portion of the offseason, and there were some questions about just what is this lingering injury John Harbaugh's been talking about. Well, he's full go for the start of training camp. Looks like he's shed down a little bit, and he said he's feeling great, feeling like he's shed that weight and he feels more like himself. How much of an improvement have you seen out of him, and has he looked as advertised so far? So I'm going to go against the grain a little bit here. I, I haven't seen an improvement out of him because I think we're still seeing the same Marlon Humphrey. I don't think that this player is that much different than what we've seen uh, in years past. I think yeah. he has played hurt numerous times, I think, over the past few seasons. And that is more the reason for any, dri any drop in play that you saw, more than any regression of skill on his part. He is known as a cerebral like film study kind of guy. And that doesn't go away when you're injured. And so you could see all of the instincts and all of the awareness was still there. And it honestly was just his body wasn't quite right. He was really 
open and forthcoming about his injuries and, and the way that it affected him, how he had to manage his rest and he didn't feel like he managed his rest that well. He's working on eating better now and just all of these things to help preserve his body. And I think that you're going to really see that show up, uh, you know, Hopefully he turns in a fully healthy season. That's going to be big for the Ravens, but he, he, he's looked really good. He's been making plays on the ball. I think that he is, if he ever left, he's definitely back now, but I don't, I don't really think the Marlon Humphrey that we know and love really, really left at any point. Yeah. I think the discourse around him began to be like, he's not valuable to the Ravens. Brandon Stevens is better. I was like, that's not fair to to Marlon especially because when you deal with an injury and Marlon dealt with a couple of them over the course of this past season it, it's hard to recover from that get back into a zone and he tried to get back for the playoffs obviously he didn't look 100% during those playoffs but with him having that time to recover and just get all the lingering stuff out you want it out now you don't want it out during the season you want it out now so take all the time you need and I think it's really important that he did that but come up with the second part of the show we'll continue talking about some risers and fallers from training camp who has continued to look good and who might need to show a little more stay tuned play and talk about on the show. First, this show is brought to you by eBay motors, passion, driving patience to form their winning championships is also what keeps the ride or die alive. eBay motors is everything you need to maintain a vehicle, a level up to peak performance, superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more, whether they're into speed, power, or style, eBay motors has it covered with over 120 million parts for a number one ride or die. Always find exactly what you're looking for. And with the eBay guaranteed fit, the part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because of eBay motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. Are the parts you need or the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins. Keep ride or die alive at eBay motors.com. Ls when I'm always good to buy eBay guaranteed fit, only available to US customers. We are back, locked on Ravens. Kevin Ostriker and Nikhil Mehta still talking with you here on this Purple Friday edition of the show. Now, Nikhil, we talked a lot about the secondary in that first part of the show, but to you, is there anybody that you think has improved their stock pretty drastically over these first couple of days? Maybe someone who was on the roster bubble who's looked really good and has put themselves in position or someone who you were expecting to see a lot of and they've delivered on that? So I think one of the guys I've been most impressed with is Malik Cunningham came over from new England at the tail end of last season to kind of be maybe an emergency quarterback, but he was working out with the receivers fully transitioned to wide receiver this off season. And every coach I've talked to has been really impressed. So it's not just me being impressed with the way the ball seems to stick to his hands. It's the coaches, John Harbaugh and Todd Munkin. I asked them both about Malik Cunningham in the past month or so Munkin most recently said how natural of a receiver Malik Cunningham is. He has natural route running instincts, the body control, the balance, and what Harbaugh had talked about previously was the fact that he brings that quarterbacking background. So he has a really good feel for identifying coverages, for sitting down in zones, for knowing how a quarterback might place a ball against a certain coverage. And that those are all things that really help him and show up on the field. He's very, very comfortable as a receiver. Uh, another player that I think their stock is... I don't want to say rising, but I think I would continue to buy their stock is uh, Odafe Oe. He is just been a beast all training camp. He's giving both tackles, whichever ones he's facing up against fits. And he's really incorporating a lot of new pass rush moves. Um, Chuck Smith, the Ravens uh, outside linebackers and pass rush specialist coach has done a phenomenal job with Justin Matabike last year. Yeah. And I will see Ojabo, Owe and Matabike all exchanging tips at the beginning of practice. And so you really hope, Ojabo, there are injury concerns. Oh, even some smaller injury concerns just week to week. But you, you got to imagine those guys are really rounding into form in terms of the talent and skill they're ready to put to work. Owe in particular, I think, is prime for a big year. Yeah, now there was that uh, the conversation between John Harbaugh and Owe to uh, right. Did you see that happen in real time? Were, were you yeah. watching that side of the field? Yeah, and and the thing was is that uh, you know, oh, he's not he's not slamming anybody to the turf. He's not he's not causing right. issues, but he is he's making contact with QBs. And even at that early stage of training camp, you really want to avoid the contact and just let the referee call the sack. But that just tells you how often he's getting back there and, and the intensity with which he's getting back there that it's hard for him to stop his momentum in time. Again, like I said, you're seeing a variety of rush moves from him. I think the other thing that's encouraging is I can, I feel like I see him testing things out especially when he's matched up against Ronnie Stanley. I've seen him work on a couple different moves, counter moves, and, and then kind of go back to the sideline and kind of look like he's kind of going over and mimicking the moves that he just did to try and figure out the right combination. So I think with Oe, 
the physicals were always there and even some of the initial moves were there but now that he's adding some counter moves and some ways to get past some better offensive tackles in the league i think we'll see more consistent output out of him yeah going to be huge especially because with Jadavian Clowney now in Carolina he is going to be relied as essentially everybody st- takes a step up on that ladder and for the youth that they're going to have they have to contribute a lot now to the secondary as well we know Jalen Armour Davis is a big name to watch maybe as that like final corner maybe there's like a competition brewing between him and Pepe Williams for maybe that final cornerback spot H- how has he looked because I think for a lot of people it's well he has the talent but the health just has not been there for him over the course of his career and that's 100% the case. He's he's looked quite good. He looks like a third-year cornerback with his draft pedigree and he 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 looks he's looked pretty good so far in camp. He's making plays on the ball. He had an interception uh beating Mark Andrews actually in the end zone yesterday and and that was again another play that I'm not sure I've seen him make before. He's very active around the ball. You can tell that he's kind of he seems more locked in and you mentioned Pepe Williams as well. Williams, Harbaugh said, has been in the right places a lot. Hasn't been targeted as much, so he's not getting as many of those highlight plays. John Harbaugh seemed really, really excited about both of those guys. They have had kind of similar trajectories, but one's a slot and one's an outside. That's really the main difference between them. And the way the math is working out for the Ravens right now, they don't need one slot or one outside guy. They don't need they have plenty for both spots. So it really is going to come down to talent. I have a sneaking suspicion that the Ravens may try and dangle one of them as a trade, uh, as trade bait, mm-hmm. uh, as we get closer and closer to the cut days, just because of how effusive Harbaugh was in his praise of the two of them. It, it seems like a very Ravensy move to try. And if they feel like they're going to move on from a guy, could, but could flip him for a day three pick swap or something like that, that another team might value just because we have, the Ravens have such an embarrassment of riches here of if secondary here in Baltimore. Yeah, and I think, you know, this is getting into the way too early roster prediction portion of the show, but I do think that six corners is probably the number I have them at right now. I could see them maybe going seven, but then that costs you maybe an offensive lineman somewhere else or something. So it it is very much a work in progress, but if you keep six, it's probably Armour Davis and Williams fighting for one spot. If it's seven, then you can keep both, but where do you lose the spot? otherwise so that to me is the really impressive part of just how much they have in the secondary but it does come with some tough decisions yeah our Darius Washington is listed at safety has been playing a lot of safety but they were very comfortable with him in the slot last year before he got injured so I think that's another element is that you have a couple safeties who drop down into the slot very fairly frequently and you might prioritize keeping an outside cornerback over a slot guy just because you have multiple options in the slot yeah, and a lot of a lot of guys can now play both. A lot of guys can even even the safeties. You talked about it with our Darius Washington. This is a it's turning into at least a positionless defense type of league. And we know the Ravens love their guys who can do whatever they can. The more you can do in this Baltimore defense, the better off you'll be and the more roles you'll have. But I also think going back to the offensive side of the ball, Nikhil, the running back position has been such a brought up topic this offseason. Derrick Henry is Derrick Henry. First of all, is he as big as advertised? Is this a mountain of a man? He is not only as big as advertised, he moves as fast as advertised. The the idea of a freight train is often attached to Derrick Henry, and people always think about the freight part of that, which is the weight. But they forget that force is mass times acceleration. And he also has the train element of freight train. Uh, and, and this is something uh, really that surprised me. It surprised Ravens running back coach Willie Taggart is just how fast his feet move for a guy that size. The Ravens had some minor concerns about his ability to fit into their offense, given how much they operate out of the shotgun compared to the Titans use of single back. And his foot speed is just up there with Justice Hills and Hill is a much smaller man. And so that to me is the most impressive thing about Henry is not his size, but actually his, his footwork. That, that is incredible because, again, we, we see, you know, like the next, next gens and everything of him making those plays and him as a receiver out of the backfield. I know people are excited to see as well, but it's the depth behind him. We know Keaton Mitchell not going to be back for a little bit, but you have Hill, as you talked about, and Rasheen Ali, even Owen Wright is a guy that has kind of made some waves here. What about the depth of the running back position has either impressed you or would you like to see more out of those guys? So this is kind of the tough thing about evaluating this early is, you know, the running backs have had trouble so far in camp other than Derrick Henry, in my opinion, just behind an offensive line that's rotating a lot. They have a lot of different combinations, guys getting used to each other. And it's a defensive line that is aggressive and really talented. It's it's another deep defensive line. I think they will have to, that they will have to cut a player that may make another roster on this defensive line just because of how deep it is. And so 
I think it's it's tough to knock the running backs too much for that. I think Rasheen Ali has looked pretty good for what you expect out of him. Justice Hill's been a little bit disappointing just in terms of seeing him find open space. But again, it, it's really hard to judge that versus the offensive line when he's not even given a chance to break tackles because they're not allowed to tackle him in the first place. So I would say that you know stock on stock on Hill is kind of leveling off. I think that Henry is obviously going to eat into a lot of his workload, but he can still be absolutely be that change of pace back they're looking for. One note on Mitchell, he seems to be progressing well. He's out there a lot with his teammates, which is always something that's good to see. Uh, and he seems he seems to always be in good spirits whenever we get a chance to say hi to him. So, all right, well that's good. That's good to hear. Hopefully he'll be back soon. But at least for now, you know, still rehabbing and getting back to full speed. You mentioned with Justice Hill, maybe the stock a little bit lower, a little, little down right now. Is there anybody else? that you just expected to see more from maybe guys that stock is falling a little bit just in the early part, but guys who were like, Oh, I'm expecting a decent amount here. And it just hasn't been that. Yeah. I mean, again, it's tough to knock him too hard considering what's he, what he's going up against, but Josh Johnson has, it does not look like the backup quarterback on a super bowl contender. He, he is, I have the utmost respect for him, his entire career. Uh, and he clearly has a lot of comfort in the Ravens offense, but we're just not seeing the passing ability that, the backup really of a Super Bowl contender should have. And I think he, he has been the primary, he's thrown a lot of the interceptions in training camp. I think he threw three yesterday and with Lamar being sick and, and his tendency to be sick, the potential for him to pick up week to week knocks, you worry about Josh Johnson being able to carry the Ravens for a two or three week stretch in the middle of the season. I think that, you know, there are options out on the market. They could go kick the tires on a Ryan Tannehill. If he's willing to take a vet minimum type deal. Um, uh, I think Tyler Huntley could get cut in Cleveland. Quite frankly, he's, yeah. he could be the fourth quarterback in Cleveland. He could get cut. Uh, I'd be surprised if the Ravens went after a reunion just because they made the kind of conscious decision to move on from him this year. But I, I do think it's worth looking at kind of trying to upgrade the backup quarterback position because Devin Leary throws a really nice ball, but he's a lot of development to do both in this offense and just in, with his touch in general. Yeah. The most confusing move of the offseason to me was Tyler Huntley to Cleveland. I just, I, I didn't get it for, for at least Huntley's side Cleveland. It's like, yeah, you get a great quarterback to be your fourth guy, but Huntley, I was just kind of, Oh, no, I thought he was going to go compete for a place he could start at, but I don't, I don't really know what that situation was. Yeah, I think the market just didn't really materialize for him with the talent, yeah. with the quarterback talent in the draft. And I think teams wanted to go with, you know, teams that were drafting a quarterback wanted to go with him as their guy. And they didn't want someone kind of, kind of come in and compete from another, from another team. Right. That, that, that makes a lot of sense. So to me, Huntley, maybe a reunion, maybe not. But again, the back and quarterback position is something to monitor. Coming up, though, in the final part of the show, we'll move through training camp notes, a couple of other guys. Then we'll talk briefly about Lamar Jackson. Stay tuned, playing to talk about here on the show. First, the show is brought to you by LinkedIn. When you're hiring for a small business, you want to find quality professionals that are right for the role. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs has the tools to help you find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. And for me, I've had a ton of great experiences over on LinkedIn. Finding jobs, networking, connecting, LinkedIn is the place to be. And LinkedIn isn't just a job board. Making helps you hire professionals you can't find anywhere else. Even those who aren't actively searching for a new job might be open to the perfect role. In a given month, over 70% of LinkedIn users don't visit other leaving job sites. So if you're not looking on LinkedIn, you're looking in the wrong place. On LinkedIn, 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. Hire professionals like professional. On LinkedIn, LinkedIn knows the small businesses are wearing so many hats and might not have the time or resources to hire. 2.5 million small businesses use LinkedIn for hiring. Push job for free at LinkedIn.com slash Lockdown NFL. That's LinkedIn.com slash Lockdown NFL to push job for free terms and conditions apply. We are back rounding out Lockdown Ravens with Nikhil Meta. I am Kevin Ostriker. And Nikhil, I think I'd be remiss if I didn't ask you about both Rashad Bateman and Tez Walker. Two guys that I think are generating a lot of buzz. Tez Walker, obviously, through the OTA and mini camp period, and Rashad Bateman really having a strong start by all accounts. But what have you seen out of those two through your eyes? Bateman is a really, really good practice receiver because he runs really crisp routes and the ball is just seems to stick to his gloves. That, and I, I don't mean to say he's not a good in-game receiver. I just mean he has always showed up really and popped at Ravens practices. That's where a lot of the excitement around Bateman has come, has been from training camp when he's looked really good. And that's not to say that he can't do it in a game, but I guess that's more to say I'm not particularly moved by what I'm seeing he's doing in training camp because I know he can do that already. I want to see him have that chemistry with Lamar integrated into this offense in the regular season. Uh, and then I'll get really excited about Rashad Bateman because I've seen him make circus catches in training camp before he did it. He'd had two in the rain on, I believe it was Tuesday. 
that was really or on Monday, I think that was really cool to watch and impressive to see. But at the same time, I wasn't surprised at all. I think that he again has the potential to be that X receiver that can just run everything in the route tree for the Ravens. I think Zay having a more advanced tree this year will help kind of even things out across the offense instead of Bateman really feeling like he has to be the number one. But uh, on the other side, Tez Walker was a big story during OTAs and minicamp, all those matchups with TJ Tampa. He's been a little bit quieter, I think, in training camp so far. He hasn't gotten as many, I think, higher higher team reps as he did in OTAs and minicamp. I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. I think that's just yeah. part of how Harbaugh likes to handle his rookies. I, I will say that one of the things that has really impressed me about Walker, two things I should say, one, his comfort in zone. This isn't something that really showed up on his college state, but he is really comfortable sitting down in zones. I think that's something that the Ravens receivers coaches do a really good job of coaching up. And the other thing is you can tell he's developing uh, his route tree, but his route tree was more advanced than his college tape showed. Well, I, I firmly believe with Tez Walker, his his draft position fell to where it was because of what he wasn't asked to do at North Carolina, not what he isn't able to do. I think that he has a much fuller route tree than people think, as opposed to just this very vertical oriented route tree. He's looked comfortable on a lot of sideline routes, um, winning uh, back shoulder balls. That has been one of the really impressive things I've seen from him is the timing and the, and his, and focus on those back shoulder balls. So I think that stock for Bateman to me is pointing, trending upward the same way it has been all off season and, and Walker, same thing. I think that there is a chance that Walker could be a pretty important contributor to this team just because his deep, his deep route tree is so refined that he, they're really comfortable sending him on those, on those deep routes. And just the more that he develops as the season goes on, he'll be able to work in more facets of the offense. Yeah. And it's going to be huge for those guys to be able to get off to fast starts and maybe play. Well, Bateman obviously play a huge role during the season, but Tez Walker may be a little underrated role as well now last thing for you to kill Lamar Jackson he was out there for part of practice yesterday ended up going inside we know he's been dealing with that illness and to you I mean how how did he look did did he struggle were the throws not there and then I don't know if you saw but apparently the Ravens are the new 76ers and Lamar Jackson is what he is there was a take on ESPN about how the Ravens are who they are and everybody's picking Cincinnati. I know Nikhil has been a very long off season of Lamar Jackson takes and uh, seems like there's a new one every day. Yeah. So I'll start with Lamar training camp. There's really no way to sugarcoat this. He looked like he was sick. Uh, the, the, there's just, he, he looked like he was battling, dealing with something. There's a lot of speculation about what it is. Quite frankly, it's not any of really anybody's business, but the Ravens and, and Lamar Jackson. I understand people have this, you know, oh, well, he's sick and we should know why. Well, he's sick. That's that's pretty much, you know, I don't think when you when you call into work sick, I don't think, you know, your your work is like, oh, well, what exactly do you have? I want to write it down. That's kind of the same thing that should apply here because um, there, there has I've just seen and heard a lot of speculation about what there is. And, and, and I just um, I think the fact of the matter is people also have this belief about him that he doesn't work hard. And so they attach this sick to, oh, he's not working hard. He's not really trying to practice. And that's just really not the case at all because he went off the field after an hour. He really he went he unofficially went one of five throwing the ball to his receivers. He threw a pick over through Rashad Bateman caught by Marlon Humphrey and just did not look like himself. So it's always tough to start out training camp like that. So a point that Governor Westmore actually made was that iron sharpens iron point, which is, you know, the Ravens actually get to go up against Lamar and Derrick Henry in practice, and that prepares them to go up against all these other unique players in the NFL. And But not having Lamar really is a detriment both to the offense and the defense. The offense chemistry is not running with QB1, with your MVP, with the the beating heart of that offense. You don't have him on the field. And so you're not able to get as many good reps in the defensive side of the ball. Like I said, Josh Johnson is just not very obviously not Lamar Jackson. And he's not testing the defense as much as Jackson would. And so they're just not able to get everything they could out of every practice with him sidelined. So uh, I'm hoping that he's back really soon. As for the whole 76ers thing, I think the big thing I like to think about when it comes to Lamar Jackson is Peyton Manning. Yep. Peyton Manning had, you know, the early, the early struggles in the playoffs, got some accolades early in his career, but it really took later in his career for him to reach playoff success. And I think, I'm not sure if I remember who posted it, but the, the quarterbacks who have won, who have been in a Super Bowl from the AFC since Joe Flacco have been uh, Manning, Brady, Mahomes, and I'm forgetting one more. Um, and that's just the way the AFC has been. I mean, Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs, 
have run this conference. It's a very, very hard team to get past. And I think that holding Lamar, saying Lamar Jackson is, is what he is. is just another way to demean him. And I, for me, I don't even think those people have anything against Lamar Jackson. I just think that they know that he is one of the most controversial quarterbacks that we have. One of the, one of the most polarizing quarterbacks that we have people love him or they hate him. They think he's a top three or out of the top 10 and they lean into that. And I think they, you know, it's fun to say, Oh, he's like the 76ers. That means absolutely nothing in terms of football. <laughs> it means nothing to me. It's just people trying to get attention. And, and I think the Ravens do a very good job of, blocking that out and not letting that get to them because the amount, like you said, of times that people put Lamar Jackson's name in their mouth with their really prompting and they draw these silly comparisons to the Philadelphia 76ers, whatever that happens to mean is just because he will get people's attention. And I think the Ravens do a good job of saying, well, we're not going to give you our attention. We're going to focus on what we're doing. Yeah. And just by the way, the whole thing about the Sixers is that, is that Joel Embiid can't make the conference finals. Well, Lamar Jackson made the AFC championship last year. And I'm just like, well, okay, what's the comparison then? Like there's I, if I were an NFL, if I were an NBA general manager, I would really like to have Joel Embiid on my team. Sure. So oh, yeah. I, I, comparing Lamar to Joel Embiid to me is a compliment. That's a, MVP runner up. That's a, that's the heart and soul of that team, which is one of the best teams in the East every year because of that guy. Yep. I, I don't, I don't dislike that comparison at all. He is a fantastic player. And so is Lamar. Yeah. 100%. And again, I don't care how you pick up the yards, you throw for him, you run for him, you throw touchdowns or run touchdowns. Lamar should not be criticized or have stuff taken away from him because he picks up yards in different types of ways. So, but it feels like he gets punished for it. And that's where I think all this discourse comes from because he doesn't throw for 380 passing yards a game. He throws for 180, but the Ravens can win by 30, but no one cares about that. So it's just, it's a bunch of discourse, but Nikhil, I appreciate you for hopping on. Thank you so much for joining me. Please tell people where they can find you and what you're working on. Thanks so much, Kevin. I will be working rest of training camp for Rough Street Report. You can find my camp notes uh, there. And then in the season, me and Deb Bunkschwag are going to get into battle plans like we have last season, breaking down kind of the X's and O's analytics of every game. Uh, you can find me on Twitter talking Orioles, Ravens, movies, not much else at Nick Knows Ball on Twitter. Sorry, X. Oh, there you go. Yeah, see, he knows ball. So that, that's how you know you got to follow him. So be <laughs> sure to check him out. The links to all of Nikhil's work will be in the description down below. Really appreciate you again. And thank you to everybody for tuning into the show today. We're going to have a couple of bonus episodes this weekend. So I'll see you back here tomorrow for more Ravens talk. Stay tuned. I'll see you right back here tomorrow on Lockdown Ravens.